Les Waller, SmartGunCleaning.com. How you doing today? Today we're going to clean a Beretta over and under 686 Silver Pigeon Shotgun. First thing, always first, make sure it is not loaded. Look down at this end, make sure there's no rounds in the barrel. There aren't any. Now the best way to do this is to go ahead and do a field stripping of it. into the bore, the butt plate, and the handle. So by doing that, that allows a lot of exposed areas here. You can see the pictures. There is some cleaning to do. If we did not take this apart, it would be very difficult to get into these spaces and to do a good cleaning. And this rifle obviously needs it. Same with the, the breech. It is nasty. And then we've also got the muzzle. Now, we do not have the proper tools, since this is not our shotgun, we do not have the proper tools to remove the choke. When I do return the shotgun to its owner, I'm going to ask him if they have a choke removal tool. And then maybe next time we can do a video specifically on how to clean a shotgun choke. But because we don't have that, we won't do that. We're not going to try and use the wrong tool to remove the choke. It's not our gun. Okay, so from there... As we can see there, there is some rust and stuff like that on the muzzle end of the barrel. I'm going to go ahead and clean this end first because using the Otis three-step process, we'll be pushing from the breech to the muzzle. And that means more dirt's going to be coming out this end. Plus, once this is cleaned on the end, any cleaning and stuff I do here is probably going to go on the inside. So that way when we do the breech to muzzle cleaning, then that'll take that out. Because this has got some serious issues. I see rust, stuff like that here. So I want to I want to eliminate that. So let's go ahead and get started. First, let's go ahead and see if we could uh, what we can do with CLP in a regular nylon brush. I kind of like to see the least aggressive to most aggressive. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, maybe that's all we need to do here. Ah, something that didn't come with the kit that I like to use, Q-tips. And actually, maybe the brush is actually, maybe the brush is actually the best thing to use there. The brush is going from br blue to black. I'm just cleaning out the notches where the choke tool for removing the choke is located. Looks like this rib has been chipped. My God. All right, I think we've gotten rid of any rust that may have been 
on the the muzzle of the weapon. That's fine for that. We'll wipe down the outside last. So let's go ahead and do the three step Otis three step process. And we've already oiled this. All right, continuing on, uh, we're going to go ahead and work on the uh, breech part of the barrels. So for these parts here, initially what we're going to do is take some CLP and some Q-tips. I like Q-tips because they get into little cracks and crevices like that, where if I use a patch, I, I don't have that granularity. I suppose you could use a patch if you use a brush with it. So here's what we'll do. We'll do one side with Q-tips and one side with a patch, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. We got this 90 degree angle here we want to get. That <laughs> Q-tip is black. Uh. You don't need excess oil once you're finished anyway. You should wipe it down a little bit. Uh, excess, excess oil just attracts dust and dirt. That's kind of counterproductive, right? So let's look at the other side. We said we were going to use a patch. So how do I get into the nooks and crannies with the patch? Well, if I have a patch, then... I take a brush and that allows me to get into the nooks and crannies. Whichever method you prefer. But it depends. Now, some places, some places using a patch with a toothbrush actually makes more sense. You know, if you need to do a hard scrub, then a patch with a toothpick will work much better. We'll have before and after photos for you to look at as well. I've got the cardboard here uh, because the steel on the barrels was cutting into my plastic tabletop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now the breach. 
here again. Oh, they're pretty dirty. You can see the carbon around the ring here. And by my cleaning this now and getting it dirty, I'm going to have to run patches through it again. But be that as it may, if we go with this method, let's, let's see if we can break up the dirt with just a Q-tip. Some of that looks pretty caked in there. A Q-tip may not be enough. Looks like whoever looks like they cleaned this weapon fairly regularly. So, but you can see how blocked it is. But it's coming right off, so it's not like it's uh, been neglected or anything. So I think a Q-tip is actually going to be perfect for just for that. And then I'm not brushing debris and stuff all over either. It's it's staying on the Q-tip. I don't want to get anything in the barrel. Oh, it's your beverage of choice. It's fine to have a beer while you're cleaning your weapon. But if you plan on shooting it or test firing it afterwards, then don't drink before you shoot. Wait till after you're completely finished, then have a drink. It looks like there's some carbon cake on here. So. Some kind of spot. Something else that comes with the Alo Otis gun cleaning system are some picks. So I'm going to take this brass one. Here again, I don't want to etch the steel. But I do want to get rid of that carbon spot. Unless that's some type of stain. Okay, I'm going to call that some type of stain then. I'm going to leave it alone. That was the upper barrel on the breech side. Now we'll do the lower barrel. Same thing. Really black, but it's coming right off. So like I say, whoever used this before it has probably been cleaning it maybe it didn't get cleaned after the last time they fired that's more than likely the case
and I'm sure there's, yeah, I can see there's residue going down both barrels. So we just have to punch those out again. Which we'll do right now. Yeah. You can see the particles it picked up. See the black particles there on the off. They say you can get up to six uses on one of these patches. You just keep changing the hole and you've got two sides. There we go. Alright, that brings us to the action. So on the Beretta 686 model Silver Pigeon, it uh, recommends not to take this apart unless you're going to be doing maintenance on it. So I am not going to take the uh, trigger assembly apart. I'm going to leave it as it is. But we do have to clean out the uh, inside here. You see the pictures here. Pretty nasty. Now, the uh, thing to note on the Beretta, and this is why it's always good to look at the owner's manual, but on the Beretta, it's okay to use oil on this plate, but it says do not put any oil here where the firing pins go. So we'll have to lightly apply oil on, I would say lightly apply oil on a patch and then dry it off. That's probably the best way to do that. Work on a circle maybe on the way from in or working out. Let's see. Actually, first I'm going to take a dry patch. Not even use oil. See how much we can clean it. Looks like quite a bit. Ugh. So just using a dry patch without oil worked to clean that part out quite a bit nicely. Yeah, that actually worked pretty good. So I'm going to follow up with a clean Q-tip, a dry Q-tip. Here again, look at your owner's manual to see where to oil and where not to oil on your gun. 
specific to your gun. Okay. So, how do we put oil on it without putting oil on where, where the holes are? Not a good question. I think probably the best way would be uh, my favorite. Q-tip. That way we've sparingly put oil there and there's none going into holes. As far as the bread, it goes a couple of key points. We went ahead and lightly oiled this. No oil goes where the firing pins are on the barrel itself. Beretta recommends putting a little oil here. Because this is what, uh, when you're, when you're opening up the, uh, the breech on a over under shotgun like this. This is the mechanism that's moving it. I want to take a patch. Where all my patches go? I'll take a small one. And I just want to put a little bit of CLP. Because I'm now going to reassemble the shotgun and there's places that I'm not going to get to so I just want to a little bit where I'm not going to be able to once it's assembled like that and we'll take one like this make sure we don't have any excess these knobs will align with the screws there like this snaps back in place so now anything that's inside there I wouldn't be able to get right so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put the handle back on we've already wiped that area I suppose we could wipe a little bit here oh we didn't clean this part
So the easiest way to do this, the easiest way, the easiest way to put this together is you got your th your finger here. This finger is going to go along this middle groove, right? So the middle is the middle groove. We come down. We're, we're touching. It's lined up. Make sure that's locked all the way. There we have it. A clean Beretta 686 Silver Pigeon Shotgun. Oh, let's not forget we want to do a final wipe down on the outside before we put it away. Just very light. And we'll take a dry patch and wipe any excess off. This is to make sure we remove any oils from the fingers and stuff like that when went hunting. This way it's protected until the next time we're ready to use it. Take a dry one. We say the, the object is not to have excess oil because excess oil attracts dirt, dust, but we do want to protect it. You made an investment on a gun or guns, you need to protect your investment. All right, we're ready to put it away. What's the first thing that you do? It's a pop quiz. What's the first thing you do every time you pick up a weapon or a weapon is handed to you? That's right. Check to make sure it's not loaded. Stay safe, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. More videos coming. Here, all right. So, see the, see these grooves here. So we come straight down. Oh. Ah. Interesting. Let's see. Let me see how to do this. Okay.